I sort of fell into winemaking and found a small niche here in central Otago where people wanted to make small batch wines for themselves. Central Otago, there is a lot of wine, so being creative is very important. It's really hard to compete against the, the bigger companies. I don't want to be like every other winemaker. I want my own niche and I want to be different. Everything I've done, I've learned along the way. There has been so many hard times trying to figure out how I'm going to do this, especially on my own. So back in 2017, I was nominated for the New Zealand Rural Woman Awards and I wasn't sure how to put together my story. So I put together a, a, a wee film and I haven't seen it for a long time. So this will be quite interesting to see. I am a, an extremely independent person. I've had to do everything on my own. You need to be able to be good at everything. My job is a jack of all trades. I am a winemaker, a viticulturalist, a mechanic, an accountant. Most important thing about my business is my clients. I, I want to make sure that they are happy with what they get out of it. It is their hard work in the vineyard. I'm a strong believer in working relationships and I think Deborah and I have worked extremely well together. She's a very busy lady, tries to do too much herself. <laughs> I keep telling her to get a helping hand, but she's uh, very much hands-on. Oh, Bob, <laughs> he's still one of my really good clients. He works so well with me. We really appreciate what she does for us here. Yeah, they're great people to work for, Bob and Nick. She makes a quality wine that's equal to, if not better than anything I've seen in the area. We wouldn't be uh, able to do it without Deborah. Growing up on a farm gave me a really good work ethic. Tanner Creef is a connection from where I grew up in the Catlins. Our farm was named Tanner Creef, so it's really important to myself to have that. Uh, as part of my business. Starting a line of Central Targo Port was a huge success. I didn't even have a tawny label back then. I, I actually was never taught how to make ports, so I... Google is a, is a fabulous thing these days, so I played around with a small barrel of port. Making the port is initially the easiest part. Um, hand bottling, hand waxing and hand labelling Oh my gosh, it was so basic back then. I can't believe that we've got this far. The port's an extremely exciting venture on its own. It took off very, very quickly. And I'm trying to keep up with it, to be fair. It's jumped from 180 bottles to 2,000 bottles. In the next couple of years, it will jump up again to at least five, 6,000 bottles per year. I never imagined DC Wines to be going this well. I now have an extremely exciting future ahead. It doesn't even have a door. <laughs> wow, that was a big process, building the winery. It's, it's very exciting learning about how to build. Um, so in here is my main tank space, the, the main part of the winery. I'll have my lab set up here. <laughs> so over here in this space is going to be where the bar is going to be situated. Oh my gosh, look. Things have changed quite a bit since then. Winning the Rural Women Awards has really changed things up a lot. How incredible. That was such a good trip down memory lane. I can't believe where I was then to where I am now. Since winning the awards, the port is now a main focus of my business. Sort of steering away from making wine now. I enjoy making port a lot more than wine, to be fair, and it is a niche market, so this is just a huge point of difference. I thought I would only jump to about two to 5,000 bottles a year, but it has now jumped to about six to 10,000 bottles a year, so it has definitely gone up a notch. Bringing in all the different hunting, hunter collection labels as well has been you know, another step in a really wicked direction. So I definitely still do everything by myself. I'm still the winemaker, still the mechanic, still the accountant doing, I do everything. Yeah, I am totally a control freak and that is probably why I haven't brought anyone else in. I just don't like letting go. Yeah, I just want, I would like to double myself, have a twin, but yeah, I am definitely a control freak. <laughs> However, I do bring in students now. It's really good um, work experience for them and also there's just 
the, small, the bits that I can't do on my own, things that I don't need to do, I do get yeah, a lot of help from, from teenagers now, which is great. And, and we have a lot of fun doing it too, so yeah. I do keep it manual because it looks beautiful. It does tell a story, there's a lot of hard work behind it. The, the hand wax, hand polished, it's all been hand labelled with the beautiful labels on it. It looks magic, it looks absolutely stunning, the final touches. And people do buy from what they see as well, so yeah, I, I do like to keep it beautiful. Didn't expect it to ever get to this level. Currently sitting at the biggest pork producer in New Zealand at the moment, so that's a really good place to be. Just being recognised for what I do is such a great feeling. People can actually see what I'm doing is something great in Central Otago. I feel like I've gone full circle. I grew up in the Catlins, but Bannockburn has brought me back to the country, which is so exciting. I feel like I'm home. Never expected to have such a great winery. Yeah, I'm just enjoying this journey. It's just taken off so much since. 2017, winning the Rural Woman Awards. <laughs> I want to be known as the Port Lady of New Zealand. <laughs>